Buongiorno, mi chiamo Clara Mabelia. Good morning, my name is Clara Mabelia. In 2010 I founded in Berlin the Cultural Entrepreneurship Institute. Today we are at the Italian Embassy and Mr. Ambassador Pietro Benassi is my guest. Welcome Mr. Ambassador. Good morning. Good morning. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, you're hosting me in your office at the Italian Embassy in Berlin. Would you please introduce yourself? My name is Piero Benassi. I'm uh, the Italian ambassador here uh, for the last two years. Uh, I started my career 23 years ago. I had many experiences in many countries as an ambassador. This is my second mission. I went to Tunisia before. I'm 58. I was born in Rome. I'm Uh, graduated in political science oh, very well. Uh, was there any uh, determining factor in your infancy that encouraged you or inspired you to take up to the diplomatic career? Well, no, actually, there was no crucial factor which uh, uh, directed me to the diplomatic career. I was particularly interested in developing my professionalism in, within a context of international relations. So I really, uh, I was very keen to practice my profession within this context, international context. And then uh, uh, some circumstances uh, led me to get some information about the diplomatic career. I attended a school for getting ready for the com competitive examination and then I won the and I passed it and I became a diplomat. Have you always been happy with your choice or... Uh, Were you doubtful at times? Well, no, a career uh, uh, is a, a, a long, lengthy path. There are difficult moments. Uh, you have to overcome some difficulties, but I never questioned my choice. If you answer the typical question, would you start again? Uh, would you do it again? I would ask, yes, I would do it again. Well, the fact that you were born in Rome so close to the history of our civilization, of our Western civilization. Uh, uh, was this fact something that led you and directed you to, in, towards this path, towards this direction? Well, I deeply feel Italian. My father was from the north, my mother was from Sicily, I was born and I grew up in Rome. So, of course, my family is a sort of a, a balanced mix of uh, the different realities of our country. Well, Rome is certainly a city that helps you to look at reality through a certain lens, critical lens a lens of critical thinking. So it helps you to come to grips with the global reality. Well, yes, probably the fact that I grew up in Rome allowed me to be very careful, but also very detached from reality because Rome went through so many vicissitudes from the historical viewpoint. So each uh, and every fact must be uh, carefully looked at, but also looked at with detachment. Yes, Yes, you're right. I mean, uh, the Roman roads have been trod upon by so many people uh, throughout the centuries. Oh, yes, you also must understand that history is made up of so many things. It's a sort of a sequence of so many factors. So you must get ready for any kind of uh, uh, situation. Well, I guess that in your job you must also be very open-minded. I mean, being the uh, diplomatic representative of Italy in Tunis and then in Berlin, this must be very different to different countries. Yes, I think that open-mindedness is necessary in this profession, even though, I mean, it's difficult to imagine uh, and to find any profession today which does not need open-mindedness. This, this is the main characteristic of this work. Another characteristic which is badly needed in diplomacy is versatility. Being versatile means more or less setting one's own objectives, possibly reaching them by bearing in mind that this is a, a work that needs different uh, tools uh, and means.
but the objective must be always the same. In the case of diplomacy, we must promote the image of our country. How can you promote the image of Italy? Is there any specific uh, organization or management structure, or do you follow your wit, your intuition? Well, intuition is always needed, but we, Italian diplomats, we have, a, 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 of course, we uh, have a vantage point. We represent a wonderful country. We are leaders in culture, in industry. We are renowned all over the world for our design, for uh, our smart way of coupling culture with economy. Uh, Italy has a century-long tradition. Also, local realities are so important. We have uh, really left an imprint on history. Just think of commune cities or uh, signaries in the Renaissance period. I mean, the Lisbon motto, united in diversity, uh, applies to Italy perfectly. In our case, diversity is our wealth, true wealth. I would add that the uh, it, building of the Italian embassy is so elegant and, of course, it is rich uh, of uh, history. Uh, so it's a landmark here in this area. Well, yes, the beauty of our embassy uh, is, of course, uh, coupled or goes hand in hand with the dramatic uh, vicissitudes of uh, history. I mean, uh, it, it was finished in 1940. Italy was going through a very dramatic period. The monumental uh, size of the embassy, of course, uh, was meant to convey a political meaning uh, of grandeur. Anyhow, the embassy was very much damaged by the Battle of Berlin. For many years, it was only used partially as the ge uh, consulate general in uh, West Berlin. After the reunification of the country, uh, it was totally uh, refurbished and uh, uh, rebuilt. Uh, today, it is still a jewel, an elegant jewel. Uh, it's very Italian in its aspect, in its appearance, without being uh, uh, charged with dramatic uh, signs and marks of the time, of history. So I'm very happy, I'm very lucky, because I represent my country with such an important embassy in a very important city. So the monumental uh, character and aspect of this embassy allows me to enhance, in the best possible way, the heritage and the uh, image of our country as it is perceived uh, in Germany. So now we reach really the heart of the matter. What, what is important? Why is diplomacy so important? Well, diplomacy, just to use the language of the 21st century, is a facilitator. I mean, at the time uh, when we are reached by news, uh, uh, every minute, every few hours, we see that uh, a crisis is about to break out or a problem is arising. And it comes, it reaches us from 240 countries all over the world. I mean, of course, media uh, uh, let us know everything about every country in the world. So diplomacy is a way to summarize all these pieces of information and to get in touch with other countries and to relate with other countries, keeping, on keeping abreast of time just to allow the decision makers, political decision makers, to make their decisions by understanding phenomena as best as they can. So this is a service we provide to political decision makers uh, whenever bilateral decisions must be made. But also in the economic field, we are facilitators. We try to facilitate the internationalization of our companies. It is a cultural facilitator, or we facilitate the relationships with the press. It must be also a facilitator for our compatriots who live in, uh, in this country. So. The consulate of our embassy must help our 
fellow citizens, not only uh, uh, to go through the bureaucratic procedures, but also whenever the, there are difficulties and problems, we must help them to understand better the reality we live in. So the embassy fulfills its task if it helps those who need the embassy to understand and interpret reality better. Just to give us a, a practical example, can you describe your daily routine or better your weekly routine? Well, the sectors I have just mentioned are mirrored by the my agenda. Uh, so my working day starts uh, with uh, the getting information about what happens in the country. Once I've got this information by means of all the possible media that allows allow me to get information, uh, but some of them uh, can be analyzed further by myself. I can get in touch with uh, local politicians or experts, academics, analysts, but at the same time, uh, during the week I may have meetings with Italian companies uh, that talk to us about their activity and they ask for advice. We have a very well organized business office. Uh, of course, we support our Italian Cultural Institute and we uh, have an annual plan of uh, our activities uh, with many uh, meetings and conferences and we must convey a very diversified image of our country. I mean, we must couple the, our uh, past culture with today's culture so much so that we, uh, I think we selected a wonderful title uh, this year we have uh, purposefully uh, paraphrased uh, a sentence by Goethe who said Italy is the country where lemons flourish. We said Italy is the country where even lemons flourish. Just to say we, we do a lot, we have so many assets. Also we have a, a close connection with our compatriots. So economics, culture, uh, press, uh, our support of our uh, fellow citizens are the main lines along which we uh, uh, direct our activity. What is the importance of the teamwork in this work? Team spirit, well, a lot, of course, nobody's an island. So we, there, we have uh, 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 many uh, employees because of course the Ministry of Foreign Affairs believes that Berlin is a very important seat, a, a very important city. On top of that, uh, Germany is a federal state, not everything happens in Berlin, so in addition and as a support to our embassy we have a huge network of consulates and uh, Italian cultural institutes and we have a wonderful top quality team, a very smart team. Uh, as I have said to other politicians who came to visit our staff uh, when we visited Germany, the fact that our team speaks German, the German language, is not only a linguistic uh, uh, asset. I mean, it, it, it implies also the understanding of the reality we're working. So um, we have uh, uh, employed many people, many persons who come back to Germany for the second, third time, so they understand the country very well. This is a, a country that uh, really demands a continuous understanding and a thorough understanding. Uh, so I came back uh, after 12 years and this was really a wonderful uh, comeback. But also it's a big responsibility. Oh, certainly, congratulations for this. So this is a really important embassy. But it would be interesting to know something about the differences you have seen, uh, you have uh, that struck you when when you came back to Berlin. Well, at the first glance, Berlin at, at first in my eyes, Berlin did not appear so different. I mean, this city is always on the move, is always uh, uh, having very big new developments. But uh, from 2002 to 2005, the very big developments had been completed. So when I came back on, in 2014, the, there was no big, big difference. 
at the first glance, except for the many cranes on the Unter den Linden and in Alexanderplatz for, to renovate the uh, Schloss and the uh, new line of the Urban. But it was uh, quite uh, similar to what it used to be. But actually, the city has changed a lot in uh, the atmosphere, the flair in the streets. And young people are changing the face of this city in line with the changes uh, due to uh, the European Union policies. So this is oh, this is this city is always on the move, but I think it, it changes at a more rapid pace as compared to other capitals in Europe. Are there any places or corners you love, you're fond of in Berlin? I would like to uh, distinguish the places from the corners. Uh, in terms of places, I would mention the Tiergarten because whenever I want to walk a bit, uh, especially in the weekend. Getting in touch with nature, I have the privilege to get out of the embassy door and uh, uh, walking in the Tiergarten immediately. As to the corners, I like Mitte a lot. I'm not very original. I like very much the area surrounding Hakishi Höfe, and I also like very much Hamburger Bahnhof. I often go there, and I like the lakes. Uh, even though, I mean, I'm a very busy person, I haven't got so much leisure time, but during the weekend, over the weekend, or especially in springtime, I go to the lakes. The lakes are really uh, what makes you understand that this city changes its colors, uh, uh, and the changing colors of the city are enchanting, really. Other places where you listen to music, well, this is the city is the temple of classical music, so <laughs> there is, um, I mean, the Berliner Philharmoniker at uh, an institution here. And then I must say that uh, with, uh, with the fall of the wall, the city has doubled. So even the cultural offer has doubled. But I must say that even jazz music, uh, is also uh, something I like very much and I think that there are clubs where very good jazz music can be uh, listened to. There are many clubs where I go quite often. Well, even at the embassy you hold many events and we know that you have a wonderful, delicious cuisine here. Well, the typical traditional Italian cuisine, uh, we try to be classical, traditional, without being boring. We have wonderful staff. We have an Italian cook from Sicily, and she is a tool uh, and uh, um, a means for promoting our culture, she, because this gives uh, us a chance to offer uh, an all-round uh, uh, image of our country. Oh, well, I can witness that this literary timbal, I mean, they could be described by Pirandello in a novel, or these mountains of cannoli, Sicilian cannoli, piled up very elegantly. Oh, yes, but I don't want to convey an image of opulence. I mean, we also try to be sober and simple. These Apennines of cannoli or timbal. Uh, but I, we try to... Uh, offer a traditional uh, Italian cuisine uh, with a few novelties, new things, uh, uh, novel cuisine a bit, uh, of course. And we try to do this by offering some cultural events that we uh, hold at the Italian Cultural Institute. Now, uh, a special question. Uh, uh, I wonder, during the events or during your career, you get in touch with um, outstanding figures of politics or of ent the entertainment world or music, so many sectors, and also uh, very important, very famous people. Uh, do you feel at ease or how do you, for example, what, what is your feeling whenever you meet a uh, uh, Mrs. Angela Merkel, or are there difficulties? Well, uh, 
of course I feel at ease otherwise uh, uh, I, I would I should be very uh, critical about myself after 32 years in the diplomatic career. But of course, I cannot say that these meetings are uh, simple or uh, like the other meetings. Of course, you must be very focused whenever you meet such important figures. Uh, I try to say this even to, our, to my young colleagues. Uh, I give this piece of advice. I, I, I tell them, be yourself. Be yourself. As I said in the beginning, the diplom diplomatic career uh, requires versatility, which does not mean that you are have a generic culture or that you being versatile means that you are able to do many things well, not superficially. Once you are able to um, master your versatility, quite well. The piece of advice I give is try to be yourself. You shouldn't be a sort of a zealot, otherwise you make a very bad impression. Uh, yes, I can understand that, but uh, my question was about the beginning of a career. Well, in the beginning uh, you won't see and won't meet so many statesmen. Uh, you can just uh, see them now and then, but you won't meet them or hold a conversation with them. Now let us speak a bit about the Italian community in Berlin. Uh, can you see changes in the last 10 years? What kind of young people or persons come to Berlin or to Germany? Oh yes, big changes. Berlin is really a symbol of the change uh, in Europe. It is so much a symbol that we cannot imagine that all other European cities uh, can offer such a paradigm, such a symbol as Berlin does. Because Berlin uh, in 10-12 years has become really uh, so important. It's been a hub. First of all, it has changed changed a lot because of the historical dramatic changes that have occurred in Berlin. It has, it is the capital again. Germany still is uh, at the core, the heart of Europe. I mean, uh, uh, the enlargement of the European Union uh, positions Germany really at the heart of Europe. So, by the enlargement process, uh, uh, thanks to the enlargement process, Germany has become the heart of the continent. And with its tradition, uh, history, culture, and efficiency, and with uh, a, a, a few characteristics and features of Berlin that are very attractive uh, to Italians. First of all, the linguistic barrier has been lifted because, yes, they must be able to speak German, but they can also speak English only. So many uh, young, the young generation, the young Erasmus generation was able to come here and attend uh, the university uh, only uh, speaking only English. So partially this uh, linguistic barrier has been lifted. Secondly, thanks to its multicultural aspects because Berlin is now the fusion of two cities, a wealthy city plus a less wealthy city. So of course you can uh, spend money uh, and have different prices. I mean you, you can also save some money or spend more. So we shifted from uh, 15,000 compatriots registered at the registration office to uh, and 40,000, so they doubled. To this we should add many young people who do not register at the registration office. Maybe now we have reached 65, 70,000 people, Italian people here. <laughs> just walk in the streets 
and you will become aware that this city, which, is, which was not a traditional destination for Italian uh, immigration or Italian tourism, has become very Italian, one of the most Italian cities in Europe. What does the embassy do to um, approach uh, the compatriots or the young people coming to Berlin? who come here to find a new job or, for example, social entrepreneurship might be promoted without concentrating to, on profit generation too much. There are the startups or the factory. I won't mention any specific name, but there is also in Berlin uh, a sort of atmosphere which is conducive to uh, the changing uh, uh, and revolutionary uh, approach I mean, the desire to change the world. Well, uh, I think that the embassy must keep abreast of our times. And I, I'm saying this because I do not believe that for each and every sector of and activity of the humankind, I should answer the question, what is the embassy doing for this or that? Because this would be really a top-down vision and we would be doomed to permanent defeat should we take this approach. I mean the embassy must not do necessarily everything for anything. We do interpret our mission uh, trying to be in, in uh, uh, keeping with our times. First of all we want to be uh, popular or to uh, be uh, within reach of those who want to see and to know us. So we want to be on the social networks, we want to be on the, net, on the internet, and for those who want to meet us, we want to provide a wide range of, inform of notions of information we, so that anybody might turn to us and um, understand what they uh, might get from us. I do not belong to the generation of those who think that we should uh, try and turn to each and every person just because of the fact that they are Italians and they are in our country. People are perfectly able to know that there is an institution, regardless of the idea they have in their mind about us, more or less updated uh, idea. We must be able to be there to be active, apart from our institutional duties. If anything bad happens to an Italian uh, citizen, we of course take action immediately, and that's obvious. But we must be able uh, to be uh, ready and uh, easy to reach for those who want to reach us. So we must, not, we must be friendly, we must be easy to reach uh, and friendly for those who come to us or turn to us. This is my way in which I uh, interpret my mission. We must be a facilitator, not an, a follower or someone who chases after people. What is your advice to young people who would like to come to and move to Berlin? Well, the same thing I would say to those who go to uh, Tanzania or California. Whenever you, we, whenever you want to move to a place, you have to get ready for it. You, must not only pack up your briefcase or look at the uh, weather forecast, you must get ready and be prepared. The fact that you know things beforehand uh, is a multiplier. I mean, the more you know, uh, the more you multiply. If I come with five and I multiply, I can give, immediately get 25 or 30. If I come with zero, now any number multiplied by zero gives zero. So if you come to Berlin, this is a serious operation, a serious mission in terms of uh, the cultural choice you're making and the existential choice you're making as in a choice for yourself. This is a big investment. You must start to invest in yourself before leaving. And now you have so many ways and means uh, to improve our knowledge. For example, when I was uh, a guy uh, to, to get ready and 
to study something, I had to go to the library. Now you can do that with a click of your, ma- of your mouse sitting in your armchair at home. Now, going back to the fact that you, as a young person, you were trying to get ready for Germany, are there any authors, writers, uh, essential for uh, understanding Germany? Well, everything is important. Of course, we have such a rich German literature. We have the German philosophy. Uh, of course, German philosophy was decisive for the 17th, 18th, 20th century. We have uh, cinema, German movies, then, which are not well known to our compatriots because, unfortunately, film, the film distribution is not, uh, uh, I mean, many many German films are not distributed in to Italy. There are very nice movies, uh, uh, but also we have a wonderful uh, uh, German theater. Just think of Bertolt Brecht. And then so many fields of culture, of course, depending on one's own wishes and uh, aptitudes, of course, getting ready for Germany must be be something uh, that allows us to follow our inclinations, our uh, our aptitudes. So we are spoiled for choice because there's so much here. Now, just to talk about another case, another issue, interracial couples, mixed couples. One may also fall in love with a German person to understand Germany better. Uh, what do you know about mixed couples? Well, I think one gets married to be happy, not to understand another country, a foreign country, better. So I wouldn't suggest to get married <laughs> to uh, uh, understand Germany better. That's a long-term investment. I don't know anything about the precise data. Of course, mixed couples have always been important in reality because with such... Uh, a high number of uh, Italian people living in Germany, of course, inevitably, uh, uh, there's a growing uh, number, I mean, hundreds or thousands of them scattered all over Germany. There are so many mixed couples, I think, with excellent results in terms of integration. Certainly, a mixed couple is a facilitator, a facilitating factor for understanding the country, not so much for the two partners of the couple, in the couple, but uh, vis-à-vis the social context in which the uh, couple lives. I think it's a good megaphone, uh, both ways, I mean, both for Germans and for Italians, in terms of acquired knowledge. Of course, the megaphone may uh, um, broadcast a nice song or an ugly song, but anyhow, it's a multiplier of knowledge. So I think think it's important. Now, for the children of these mixed couples who live here in Germany, there are some schools where they can be educated in a bilingual uh, way. Yes, uh, these schools are are scattered all over the country. Berlin, in Berlin, we have a bilingual school at the uh, at the level of the Grundschule. In Schönenberg, we have two high schools, uh, uh, bilingual high schools: the Albert Einstein and the Alfred Nobel School. I mean, Berlin is offers uh, very good bilingual schools. Uh, all along the way, I mean, from the first uh, grade of the Grundschule down to the Abitur. Certainly, um, we should do more in other places, in other cities, in terms of bilingual uh, schools, but we... I mean, this can be done by private schools, too, not only by public schools. Some excellent private schools may uh, meet some demand for this kind of education. So I would welcome the private initiative in this field. I should say that not always does a 
uh, uh, the presence of a high number of mixed school give rise to or uh, invites and uh, um, promotes uh, bilingual education for so many reasons, for many reasons, or because uh, the uh, classical studies are not always in demand here. So the market uh, has its own autonomous rules and drivers. Now, you've been so successful in so many fields. Is there any project or mission that you want to accomplish in the next future? Well, actually, I believe that a diplomat, down to the end of his or her mission, must do his best uh, to achieve the original objective, which is the aim of promoting his own country or her own country on one hand. On the other hand, a diplomat must try to demystify in a credible way, not in a fictitious way, by getting in touch with the press or by exposure to the public. Uh, uh, his mission is to demystify inevitable cliches and commonplace uh, uh, beliefs. We bear in our minds some cliches, we are stick to cliches vis-à-vis uh, -vis our uh, partners and also our partners uh, hold in their minds some cliches, so we must demystify them somehow. This is my true project. Now to reach this objective we try to plan many initiatives, many contacts. But this is my main inspiration, my main idea. Now, just imagine you're talking to young people who would like to follow your example, becoming a diplomat. What would you suggest to them? Well, first of all, I'd say that this is a wonderful job. Uh, it would be strange uh, if I said should say the opposite. But this is really a... a, a wonderful job, but uh, uh, its traditional image may uh, uh, lead uh, this uh, job to fall victim of uh, its own tradition. I mean, we often have to come to grips with a century-long tradition, so you may uh, think it's a, a job of the past. No, it's a very, very uh, modern job. You can uh, uh, resort to, to all uh, most advanced cutting-edge technologies and media. It has a century-long tradition, but it, it is a very modern job that allows you to get a first-hand experience to make a big contribution to the developing the international relations. Now, since our aim is that of sharing objectives such as peace, economic development, respect for human rights, uh, the, this, um, of course, it's a conflict of interest here, but I think it's the most beautiful job in the world, but I must say it's a beautiful, wonderful job. Of course, you, ha you must have a vocation, you must feel a calling to this job. Now, last question. Being an Italian, uh, uh, do you believe you have uh, an additional... Uh, plus, if I have a plus, uh, I, I, I think I have a plus because I come from Italy, because Italy is the country I represent. Uh, let us other people be the judges. I know that I come from a country that allows me to make a very good impression. I'm, I think I'm very lucky because I represent uh, such a country. Of course, I know, I'm aware that uh, in other sectors uh, the development and promotion of international relations is badly needed just to improve some areas uh, in which our country lags behind. Um, therefore, we must try and reach higher standards that we absolutely, we are absolutely able to reach. So even, even in this respect, exchange can help us to grow. 
Since I'm an Italian diplomat, I believe that I'm not the one who gives less. The contrary is true, very often indeed. Now, you get in touch with very important people at the highest level. What is the most important thing in life? What is, what is, what is, that's a very difficult question, of course. I don't like the word power. Uh, you talk about also spheres of power, but uh, I always say, even to my children, I say, I got in touch with people who uh, hold a big responsibility, must shoulder big responsibilities. What I, I'm struck whenever I meet uh, outstanding figures, important politicians, of course, a diplomat is no politician. It's, but I always, I'm always struck by the, the big responsibilities politicians might, must take. I don't like the concept, the notion of power. I like the notion of responsibility. And this is the key to answering your question. What I witness is the exercise of responsibility. If responsibility is shouldered with a big effort, by making the biggest possible effort, then it pursues the general interest. That's why I like to be defined as, uh, and dubbed as a civil servant, because I work for the general interest. That's why I like this British word. Thanks for your precious time.